Can helicopters safely fly in clouds? Hello, YouTube. Now, this is a question I often get asked. Can we fly in clouds? Well, the short answer is yes, but the helicopter itself doesn't know it's flying clouds. The air still passes over the rotor blades the same way and the engine keeps spinning the same as before. But why are pilots so often grounded when the weather gets poor? And why, unfortunately, do we hear of regular fatal accidents that occur in bad weather? Well, to answer that, we have to look at the unique mission profiles that a helicopter flies and how it differentiates from fixing flying. And we also need to investigate inadvertent instrument meteorological conditions, otherwise known as IIMC, and the effect it has to prevent you to see where you're going and the influence it has on the ability of the pilot to maintain control. Now, US accident statistics reveal that a helicopter pilot who unintentionally flies VFR into IMC will very likely lose control of the aircraft and be dead within a medium time of 56 seconds. Quote from the US helicopter safety team. Instrument meteorological conditions, IMC, exist during times of rain, low clouds, low levels of ambient light and reduced visibility and are often referred to as a degraded visual environment. Now, inadvertently, Entering IMC remains one of the most dangerous and prolific causes of, t of fatal helicopter accidents and has unfortunately claimed the lives of countless helicopter pilots. When a pilot loses a visual reference to the ground, it can be difficult to maintain control of the helicopter, especially in a light single engine helicopter without any form of stabilisation system, such as stability augmentation systems or an autopilot. This can lead to loss of control and often a fatal crash. And yet, routine, safe uh, IMC flight occurs regularly as a daily occurrence in offshore helicopter operations. Indeed, scheduled airline flights work all under IFR conditions. Now, they are provided usually under the protection of air traffic control in and out of large airports with radio and navigation infrastructure. However, where helicopters excel, and such is the nature of onshore helicopter flying, that you're usually going to a landing site that doesn't have complex navigation systems to facilitate a safe takeoff and landing in bad weather. When you're landing in a clearing in a field, pub, pub car park, festival site, or in the event of an emergency helicopter, a car crash at the side of the road or a hospital helipad. Safe IFR flight requires specifically equipped aircraft, trained and current pilots, appropriate route planning, and often with weighty fuel reserves, which is fine in a Boeing 737, but less practical in a small five-seater helicopter. IMT flight is some of the most demanding, uh, disorientating, dangerous conditions a pilot can experience. Um, and the US NTSB identified 129 fatal crashes in a 20-year period, um, with the cause being at least attributed to IIMC. Um, with data from 2011 showing that 86% of IIMC incidents resulted in fatalities. Now, the only caveat to when I say the helicopter doesn't know it's flying in clouds is icing. Icing is a killer. Flying clouds or visible moisture brings the risk of icing if the outside air temperature drops to around the freezing level or below. Icing causes issues in a number of ways. Firstly, there's a weight penalty as it starts to build up on the helicopter, firstly accumulating behind really, well, anything that juts into the airstream, such as windshield wipers, skids, door handles, hinges, and wire stripe protection kits. This is where you can start to see the ice first form when you're flying. It affects the performance of the helicopter, but what is worse is when the ice forms on the rotor blades, which, in addition to adding weight, critically, it disrupts the shape of the airfoil, increasing the drag of the blade and reducing the lift that is produced at any given angle. The combined effect is that the engine has to work harder to maintain the same speed and altitude, and in extreme cases, causing the helicopter to descend because there's not enough lift that can be produced, despite the engine working at full power with the collective race. Now, why do pilots find themselves flying into clouds involuntarily? Well, unfortunately, get homotitis. It often leads a pilot to push a bad position when all other logical solutions point to getting the aircraft on the ground. Now, the old adage says, it's best to be on the ground wishing you're in the air than in the air wishing you're on the ground. Especially, this is true when flying in bad weather. Whilst it be personal pride, prior commitments, fear of letting passengers down, or even commercial pressure, suggest that you push on in deteriorating conditions. Whilst you convince yourself that you can fly through it, it's better to land whilst you still have enough visual references to do this. Wait for the weather to improve or to get ground transport. Now, this is the key thing about a helicopter, you have that ability to land, make the most of it. Now, as whilst it's recognized that landing somewhere other than your intended destination, be it in a field, another airfield, 
is an inconvenience and potentially leading to some in, in additional cost from expenses. In 1997, the UKCA introduced the Strasse scheme. Now, this is where landing fees are waived in the event of a genuine divert. Now, this is on the back of a review of fatal general aviation accidents, and they realised that the threat of extra landing fees, landing in an airfield you didn't want to, forced many pilots to continue into bad weather, past a perfectly safe diversion airfield, through the fear of paying these large costs. Many pilots are obviously optimists, perhaps believing that the better pilots that they are in reality or, or hoping the forecast will be incorrect and the conditions will be better than, uh, than predicted or improved. And they often suffer the misperception from the risk of continued flight in these degraded visual flight conditions. And upon having invested in the flight, are unwilling to concede defeat and abort. Now, unfortunately, as humans, we are often very reluctant to give on, up on our investments of time, costs and effort, the commitment to the flight and the reluctance to cancel. Unfortunately, only just increases as you progress further into the flight preparation. You commit to drive to the airfield, you check the helicopter over, you make all the arrangements for the destination and perhaps even go for a quick weather check. And all of these work against the logical decision to cancel, land or divert once you encounter the impassable weather. Now, unfortunately, continued flight in a degraded visual environment in an inherently unstable helicopter leads to an increase in your workload, increased stress, it causing cognitive functions to shut down as the brain diverts vital resources to the organs, the vital organs, in turn, leading to a loss of peripheral vision, tunnel vision, disorientation, regression of our flying abilities, resulting in over-controlling and invariably in an inability to maintain control. Now, make, make no mistake, flight into an IM, IIMC situation represents a serious risk to the pilot and anyone on board and constitutes an emergency. So how do helicopters safely fly and count? Well, additional safety considerations are implemented with enhanced flight planning with regard to fuel planning in alternate airports. See our video on that. And in Europe, the helicopter has to be twin engine with a number of duplicated redundant systems, including a second generator and a form of autopilot. In America, the Bell 407 and the Leonardo Augusta Westland 119 are leading the way with IFR certified single engine helicopter versions available, which modify the base helicopter, requiring the install of a second electrical generator system, a second pitot-static system, and a three-axis autopilot, plus additional standby instrumentation and a radio altimeter to be installed. Additional pilot qualifications, an instrument rating, and a destination which has a published instrument approach are usually required for safe and legal operation. So in summary, IIMC is a known fatal trap that unfortunately causes pilots to kill themselves. Continued flight in a degraded visual conditions invariably leads to loss of control unless the pilot is suitably qualified, prepared, and the helicopter is adequately equipped for flight in clout. Unfortunately, accidents continue to occur in IIMC, despite advances in weather forecasting technology and access to live weather updates. Now, to avoid such an event, pilots can consider setting personal minimums above the minimum legal weather requirements that matches the pilot's experience and the environment they're flying in. And of course, if there's any doubt uh, that the flight can be conducted safely, there is no doubt. It's just not worth taking the risk by taking off. If you were to encounter a degraded visual environment, in flight, make a decision early to divert or to land. Rather than pushing on dodging clouds and allowing yourself to descend, lower and lower to try and keep cloud, clear of the ground. If you are working in a degraded visual environment, slow the helicopter down so you have more time to react to any obstacles in your path and land the helicopter when you still have a chance to safely put it down using the remaining visual references that you have. Hopefully this video has provided a little bit of an insight into the inherent risks and dangers of flying a helicopter into clouds and indeed provided some explanation on how daily safe operations in helicopters occur when flying in clouds. Thank you very much for watching and until next time, fly safe.